turn this right at a fucking light. Holy shit. I know I'm late to the Aquaman review party, but who cares? We're gonna do it anyway. <laughs> Hello again, sub-stalkers and freaks, and welcome back to Dead Jester Circus. Yeah, I know, this movie's been out for a few weeks now, but I just got to see it over the holidays, and plus it was right in the middle of my little bit of a break that I wanted to take, but now that I'm back, I can get this shit done and over with. Permission to come aboard? I thought Aquaman was... Good. It wasn't as good as Wonder Woman, in my opinion, but it wasn't as bad as Batman vs Superman and Justice League. I thought the special effects looked really good. I liked the way they did this Lord of the Rings meets Thor hodgepodge of the Atlantean world and every like. I like the way they just built all that stuff up and I like the way it looked. I'm a big sucker for Greek mythology, so to see all that incorporated into the aesthetic of Atlantis I thought was really cool. Plus, what's not to love about men on shark back? That just looks fucking awesome. Uh, I really liked the scene on the boat with Aquaman and uh, whatever Amber Heard's character name was. It really felt like something out of a horror movie. Just the way the scene looked with the lighting and the way the fish creatures were attacking and the use of color, especially with the flare when they jump off of the boat and dive into the water. There's that shot where you see all the creatures underneath the water and on top of the ocean and they're, how they're all coming after Aquaman. It just really captures a real horror movie vibe that I dug in that little scene. I thought that was actually really, really cool. That scene was probably my favorite in the entire movie. I thought it looked awesome. You do your best thinking when you're not thinking at all. That was the worst pep talk ever. But it was around this time in the theater that I started thinking to myself, why do they need a boat? Can't they just swim to where they need to go? That's like watching a Superman movie and instead of him flying to wherever he needs to go, he just jumps on Southwest. And sticking with the whole swimming versus vehicles thing, going back to Atlantis, what was the point of all the vehicles there? Now, my understanding of it is that all these Atlanteans are supposed to be evolved enough that they all have this sort of innate superhuman swimming ability that they can tap into to go wherever they need to go. But if this isn't the case, then I either missed the memo or the movie didn't do a good enough job of explaining it. Because the way I feel, A, they're redundant, and B, they're only there to service an action sequence later on. Because it literally makes no sense to have them in there otherwise. Aquaman doesn't need to be two and a half hours long. This movie easily could have been trimmed down by about 20 or 30 minutes, and I think it would have made all the difference in the world. And one of the aspects of it being too long is one of my other problems with this movie. I feel like the movie loses focus between its two villains. I didn't feel like the use of Black Manta in this was necessary. You could have cut his side story out of the movie altogether and the movie would have felt just exactly the same. In my opinion, they just should have focused on the struggle between Orm and Aquaman, shoehorning in Black Manta. They really didn't need to do that. The movie would have been fine without him. Stick with one, focus on that, and I think the movie could have been much better. And I also noticed some inconsistencies between this movie and Justice League. Now, I could be wrong, but I believe at some point he does say that he's never been to Atlantis or he doesn't really give a shit about the Atlantean people because he's kind of just willing to let Orm do his thing and he just doesn't care. Which, that's all well and good, but didn't we just see him go to Atlantis in Justice League to try to stop Steppenwolf from taking the mother box? And also in Justice League, in that very same scene, he really seems to be really spiteful to his mother, but in Aquaman, he just inexplicably has a change of heart. And see, this is why DC really does stand for don't care, because they do not care about continuity in their films from one to the other. I know I'm probably making a mountain out of a molehill here, but it's just those little details when they just screw them up, it really just gets under my skin. This movie also had a really unconventional way of editing. It was a very non-linear style of editing, which isn't a bad thing, but in this movie, I just think it was a little too much of cutting back and forth between him as an adult, him as a kid, then back to him as an adult. 
because it was like the movie was trying to say, hey, before you watch this scene, really quick, here's three minutes of backstory. So when we cut back to that scene, you'll understand it and it'll all make sense. It was just a little too jarring for my own personal taste. And it really took me out of those scenes and out of what was going on. And also, I really didn't think there was that great of chemistry between Jason Momoa and Amber Heard, which makes their forced romance at the end seem really out of place. Like, yeah, they had their little bantery moments throughout the whole movie, and I guess that's supposed to pass as flirting. It never really came off to me as that way. It just came off as Momoa being a knucklehead, and then she's just kind of rolling her eyes at it. Could have just peed on it. So we get a whole movie of that, and then at the very end, she has this kiss with him, which comes completely out of nowhere. It's funny because it's at the most inopportune time, and the camera's doing this spin around them as there's stuff going off in the background that's meant to look like fireworks. But those are not fireworks, those are just people getting killed. So they're having this big romantic moment, and boom, there goes 20 people, boom, there goes a whole squadron of people, boom, there goes your big ass ship. It was just really weird to get all this death going on in the background, and then here they are just making out in front of it all. Like, yeah, we don't give a fuck about any of our men and soldiers that are dying. Screw them, I just need to get some Amber Heard action. But that's all I gotta say for Aquaman. So for the very first time, Bring forth the wind scale. And yes, sadly, this movie does fall in the mild and medium category for me. While it is not an awful movie by any stretch of the imagination, it just is a little too flawed for my liking, and it's a little too slow for my liking. Jason Momoa, while not being a bad actor, he is certainly not a good one. And the lack of chemistry between him and her, I think, really hurt this movie. Overall, it's a movie that I would say it's worth a watch, but... I have no real desire to ever see it again. So sorry to all you Aquaman fans out there, but... Anyways, that wraps up my review of Aquaman. Do you agree? Disagree? I don't give a fuck. Comment down below. And remember, please like, subscribe, and comment. Adios, and get the fuck out of my house.